Good morning students, myself Dr. Haribho Vaghiri, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Maharaja Jivajirao Shinde Mahavidyalaya Shrigondha, District Ahmadnagar. Our college is affiliated to Saitribhai Phule University of Pune. At the main aim of this video is only for educational purpose due to this pandemic of COVID-19. We have trying to learn in this online series. And in this online series, our subject is the botany. In that botany, FIBSC, our paper is our second that is plant morphology and anatomy. In that paper, we have completed first credit and we have started second credit also. In that second credit, we have completed most or the first articles and in today's article, we are going to learn about the internal organization of plant body. In that internal organi organization of plant body, we are going to learn about the internal structure or anatomy of monocot root. And when we are going to learn about monocotyledonous plant or anatomy of monocot plant, then we have to take take the take on the example of maize plant. We know maize is a monocotyledonous plant, and the adventitious root system is there in monocotyledonous plant, and we have to take the transfer section with the help of uh, new blood. And when we take that section on the slide, that when we observe, when we stain that slide and observe under microscope, how it looks like, which are different parts inside that section, we have learned about that in details. Then the internal structure of monocot root shows different details or the following details in that first details about epiblema. Then we know that the internal organization, organization the outermost layer uh, is a epiblema and it is a single layer with uh, numerous root hairs on that epiblema. There are different root hairs also. And we know that in uh, taproot system also and in adventitious root system also, the numerous root hairs are present on both type of roots. And in on that epiblema, there is a numerous root hairs and that is called a exodermis. That is called a exodermis in mature root. When the root is a primary and when the root become a mature, then that time it is called a exodermis. Then next to that epiblema, there is a part of cortex and we know that the, it is a cortex is a multilayered, it is a parenchymatous with a large intercellular spaces. In that cortex, it is a large intercellular spaces are present, it is a parenchymatous and it is many layered, that is many layered, that is called a multilayered. And next to that cortex, there is a endodermis and that in endodermis, it is a thick cells or the wall of that endodermis is a very thick wall. They have without Casparin strips and that is called a passage cell also. It provides passage to the water. Then next to that endodermis, there is a steel. And in that steel, it has a xylem with radiating ribs and pith is absent. Hence, it is a actinostelic, actinostelic protosteel. And the steel consists of pericycle, vascular bundle, and pith. And we know that what about pericycle? Then, pericycle is a single layer. This pericycle. It is a single layer and it is partly of, it is made up of sclerenchymatous cells and it is near to the protohylum in patches. 
then next to that there is a vascular bundles and when we are going to learn about vascular bundles there are two main parts that is xylem and phloem in that vascular bundles and that vascular bundles are found in a large number that is more than 8 vascular bundles are present in a monocot root and each one uh, and f is a that is a radial type first is a radial type and xylem patches are present at different radii. Radii means it is a singular radius or the polyarch condition that is also called a polyarch conditions poly means many arc means sites a different sites are there and it is xylem is composed of single rounded the structure of that xylem is a rounded that is called a metaxylem vessel toward the pith and one or sometimes two small polygonal or round thick called protoxylem is also there uh, vessels that are toward the periphery means some part is toward the pith and some parts is the toward the periphery. And so, the xylem shows exarch conditions and therefore, that type of xylem is called exarch. Then phloem lies in the form of a small patches uh, alternate to xylem. There is also phloem in vascular bundles and that are also alternate to xylem and pith occupies the central position. We know that central portion is of pith of a steel and it is composed of a thin walled parenchymatous cells containing abundant starch grains. Means in that starch grains there are a, a abundant starch grains are present in the monocot root. Then uh, we are going to uh, learn about the anatomy of dicot stem also. When we uh, are going to learn about the dicotyledonous plot, then we have to take on the example of sunflower stem and the helianthus anus is the botanical name of that sunflower. And in that sunflower, when we uh, take the transverse section of a stem with the help of a new blade, then which are the different parts inside that plant or inside that section. When we take that section on the slide, when we stain that section and when we observe under a microscope, then there are different parts uh, shows. The first part is a uh, epidermis. We know that epidermis is the outermost and it is a protective and it is also a single layer. If it is a single layer, if then it, it also work uh, as a protective layer and the cells are without intercellular spaces. There is no intercellular spaces in that epidermal layer and if there is an intercellular spaces, then that is not a good sign. And cells are living, that cells are living and outer wall of them is cuticularized. The outer wall of that epidermis is a cuticularized means there is a cuticle and a large number of multicellular hairs. We know that when we uh, take the uh, stem of uh, sunflower in our hand, then our hand uh, is full with the uh, different uh, hairs in our hand and therefore, the large number of multicellular hairs and stomatal opening also may be present on the ang stem. When we take the and stem of the sunflower and when we peel that stem and when we observe that under microscope then there is a large number of uh, stomata is also present in. Then next is a ground tissue then which are the different uh, part uh, or which are the different uh, part are present in the ground tissue. Then it is a differentiated into three regions that ground tissue is a differentiated into three regions that is hypodermis, then cortex and endodermis. In this way the ground tissue is divided into three regions and what about hypodermis? In that hypodermis it is present below the epidermis. 
hypodermis is present below the epidermis and we know that epidermis is a single layered compactly arranged cell. So, there is no intercellular spaces and the hypodermis is made up of few layers of colon chymatous cells. It is made up of colon chymatous cells with angular thickenings. The thickenings are angular and gives mechanical support. The hypodermis plays very vital role in the construction of that plant. It is uh, uh, takes part in the mechanical support to the growing stem. When sto stem is grow, when stem is in growing conditions to give the mechanical support is the main function of that hypodermis. And cells are living that hypodermal cells are living and may contain many chloroplast and in that way when the there is a chloroplast is also present means that stem can be participate in the process of photosynthesis also. Then next to that endodermis epidermis, uh, hypodermis there is a cortex. Then what about cortex or which are the different points against uh, in cortex? It is uh, found next to the hypodermis. It is next to the hypodermis and it consists of loose parenchymatous cells. Hypodermis is made up of colon chymatous cells, but cortex is made up of parenchymatous cells with large uh, number of intercellular spaces are there. In the cortex region there is a intercellular spaces and the cortical cells are thin walled oval means there are different types of cells in that parenchymatous cortex means the cortical cells are thin walled it may be oval or it may be rounded or uh, it is a living with a distinct nucleus and cytoplasm they have living cells and some isolated mucilage canals or resin ducts that mucilage canals or that is also known as the resin ducts are also present in the cortical region. Then cortical parenchyma mainly has a storage function they have a to store some material in that cortical parenchyma and the cells from outer layers of cortex may contain chloroplast. Chloroplast plays very vital role we know that and that chloroplast are present in the cortical region and may be function as a assimilatory cells that is a main function that is assimilatory cells manun te kaam kartat te chanantar apan pahato hai endodermis. Ata endodermis in that endodermis that is a innermost layer of cortex which separates cortex from steel is the endodermis. What is the it is the boundary it is the boundary between the steel and the cortical region ok and the cells of the endodermis uh, are barrel shape that cells are of barrel shape compactly arranged without intercellular spaces cells are parenchymatous and rich in starch grains. There are large number of starch grains or are they rich in starch grains and therefore, endodermis is sometimes referred to as a starch sheath that is also known as a starch sheath or that is referred as a starch sheath and the radial and inner walls are thickened. Uh, due to deposition of lignin. There is a deposition of lignin and due to that deposition the wall or the, the inner wall of that endodermis become thick and suberin forming a casparin strips and there is a suberin also that have a casparin strips and still includes pericycle, vascular bundles, pith and medullary rays also. Then steel is a siphon steel. Then what is siphon steel? That is specially subtype there is a U steel and yes pith is a present in entire region and vascular bundles are conjoint, collateral that is not concentric, open type and arranged in a ring that is the main uh, characteristic features of this endodermal cells of the dicot stain. Then about uh, pericycle, what about pericycle? It is made up of alternate bands of parenchymatous and sclerenchymatous cells. It is alternate bands, some one band is of parenchymal cells 
and another band is of sclerenic amateur cells means there is alternate bands of both type of cells. Then sclerenic amateur tissue are found in the form of a crescent shaped patches that is called a crescent shaped patches in between endodermis and phloem bundles. This is a very important characteristic features of the pericycle. Then parenchymatal cells are also bast that is called a bast cells. They provide a mechanical support to the plant parts and the very important part that is vascular bundles. Then what about vascular bundles? We know that the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring in dicot then each vascular bundle is a wedge shaped, a conjoint, collateral and open type. Each vascular bundle has a patches of xyla toward the center and patch of phloem toward the periphery means periphery region of phloem is there and the center la xylem is there. And a strip of cambium is present in between xylem and phloem. There is a cambium, strips of cambium. And then what about xylem? The inner to the cambium is a xylem. And that xylem is composed of tracheids is also present there. There are different vessels, then there are some xylem fibers and parenchymata cells. Means the tracheids are around the metaxylum vessels and lying in between them. Then the vessels or trachea are thick walled cells arranged in the rows. Then the metaxylum toward the periphery and protoxylum toward the center and called endarch xylem. Then the metaxylum is reticulate and pitted vessels while protoxylum has annular spiral and scalariform vessels. Then xylem fibers are irregular and polygonal in shape means there are different shapes of xylem fibers. They get mixed with tracheids that are also mixed in the tracheids. When we take the transfer section, we cannot easily uh, differentiate that which is a tracheids and which is a another cells or xylem fibers. Then xylem parenchyma cells are thin walled around the protoxylum toward the inner side of the bundle and these cells have lining of the protoplasm. And what about the last point that is phloem? The, it is found below the sclerenchymatous patch of the pericycle. And it is consist of few elements, companion cells and phloem parenchyma. Then what is sieve elements? It is also appear as a large isolated tubes, sieve elements that is isolated tubes are there and the remaining cells of phloem, parenchyma, fibers that are absent, that are absent. Then phloem cells are living and they conduct the food material. Phloem plays very vital role in the stem of the mono uh, dicot it uh, conduct the food material and inner to that there is a cambium also and what is the function or how it looks like the cambium is present in between phloem and xylem. There is a boundary or the in between the phloem and xylem there is a cambium and it is many layered also that cambium is a many layered and the cambial, cambial cells are thin walled with large distinct nucleus is there and dense cytoplasm is also there. In this way uh, the cambium is there and inner to that there is a pith. How the pith is there? It is a central most region, it is a central part. It is a central part, it is made up of parenchymatous cells. The cells are rounded, thin walled with intercellular spaces. Uh, and the, we know that pith is a storage region, it stores the food material and inner to that there is a medullary rays also and they are also known as a pith rays. In that pith there is a medullary rays and that is called a pith rays and composed of, it is also composed of thin walled, uh, radially elongated parenchymatal cells 
is between two vascular bundles and they act as a storage cells. This is very important they act as a storage cells and involved in lateral translocations of food, water and other substances. In this way uh, today we have learned about the internal organization of primary plant body in that primary plant body monocot root anatomy of monocot root we have studied in this lecture and anatomy of dicot stem also we have studied in this video. Okay. Thank you for watching.